Hi, it's me, Ayo, the popcorn philosopher. Welcome back to my Ooh. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> How the heck are ya? How's life today? Where I'm here to talk about Bjork, Revenge, and the Northman. So in case you didn't know, Bjork is going to be in a film called The Northman. And I haven't been this excited about a movie in... I mean, I don't even know how long. I'm thrilled. <laughs> and at the end of this video, I'll be doing a trailer reaction. I saved it so we can watch it together. So look out for that at the end of the video. I haven't even been to the cinema since before COVID. And I feel like this is the first movie that's really going to draw me back. I'm so excited. And not just because of Bjork, although I was very disappointed to find out that she's not a main character. The first thing I saw made it seem like she was the main character, but she's more of a supporting character. But because I'm so excited about this, I also decided to do a Bjork music reaction video. So look out for that. That should have gone up yesterday. But Bjork famously said that she would never make another movie again after making Dance from the Dark and having that infamous adversarial relationship with its director, Lars von Trier, including the infamous urban legend that a fight between them got so heated that Bjork, out of anxiety and frustration, started eating her cardigan, which is probably not true, but it's so legendary, I kind of wish it were. I just want to stop this for a moment because I just found out while I was editing this that this story is definitely not true and that Lars von Trier was harassing her and I believe her totally. I always believe in believing the victim, especially someone in her position as famous as she is. That's not an easy thing to come out with. I actually find the story charming about eating her sweater. Don't ask me why, but um, knowing the full story now, I don't think that story is a good story to spread. It feels like a story meant to make her look crazy, and I think of Lars von Trier completely differently now. However, I think Bjork's performance in that movie is one of the best performances I've ever seen. And I'm not even exaggerating. It's completely heartbreaking, realistic, almost as if she wasn't even acting at all. And I don't know a movie where I cried that hard. I mean, I was inconsolable. I've only been able to watch it three times, but the soundtrack I've listened to countless times. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing her in a movie again because she's also gonna be doing the soundtrack as well. I think that's kind of how she got involved in it. One of the writers on the movie is Xion, who has worked with Bjork in the past in her own work and in her work even with the Sugar Cubes, so really far back. But I'm thrilled to see her in a movie again, and I really hope she has a better experience this time so we can see more Bjork performances. <laughs> kind of selfish reason. <laughs> but there's actually five reasons why I want to see this movie. Number one, of course, is Bjork. Two is that it's a Robert Eggers film, and he hasn't done many movies, but I've loved everything he's done. And I even waited a really long time to see his first movie, The Witch because I remember it came out um, on the festival circuit and it got incredible reviews and it took forever for it to get to a place where us everyday people could see it. Back then, it was really hard to find horror movies that were well received, but boy, have things changed, huh? I mean, we really are in a golden age of horror, but you know, I also love The Lighthouse. And the third reason is because of the rest of the cast. I keep finding out more people are in it that I like. Uh, first, it was Anya Taylor-Joy, who is quickly becoming one of my favorite actresses. She was starting to get up there with Elizabeth Moss for me. Um, but then I found out there was Alexander Sarsgaard. And then finally, I found out there was Nicole Kidman, who is one of my top three actresses of all time. Even though I thought she was horribly miscast as Lucy. Don't come for me. <laughs> I mean, I thought she did well for what she was able to do with it. I just don't think she was right for the role. I just don't think she was the right person, even though I love her. Oh, and also Bjork is going to be in it with her daughter, Isadora. So I'm excited to see her as an actress and them being in a movie together. The fourth reason is because I love Nordic and Viking historical drama and really all period films. I mean, if you have a lot of historical accuracy and period detail, 
it's almost as if you're in a time machine and that's like one of my wishes if I was ever granted three wishes is to have a time machine and the last reason and the reason why I made this video was because I have an obsession with revenge films and stories and realizing that this was a revenge story and my subsequent thrill that it was a revenge story, it brought up a lot of like moral quandaries in my mind. And that's just the kind of thing I like to talk about on this channel. But you know, I'm not really sure why I like revenge stories so much. Because in life, I don't like the thought of revenge at all. And I'm a Scorpio, right? We're supposed to be a vengeful people. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why so many people are scared of and hate Scorpios. Scorpios are one of like the most hated and feared signs in the zodiac, even though I think it's actually supposed to be more balanced than that. Personally, I think it's because Scorpios can see hidden motivations, and every time someone says that they hate Scorpios or they don't like Scorpios, I think, okay, what Scorpio saw through you, huh? <laughs> but this is why I think horoscopes and astrology can be a good thing. Because knowing that I have the capability of being vengeful has made me be very wary of going there. So a long time ago, I made a pact with myself that anytime I'm feeling like I want to get revenge or feeling vengeful towards someone, I force myself to do the direct opposite of whatever I'm thinking. Let me think of a good example. Um, in one of my last videos, the Taylor Swift and Jake Gyllenhaal video, I talked about an ex who kind of well, did me dirty, <laughs> but he moved out, but he was keeping all of his stuff at my apartment, and it was a lot of stuff. Did I want to start fire to it all? I sure did, but did I do it? Because of my pact, I didn't do it, and in fact, I made myself think of something that would be the opposite of doing that. So when he left a bunch of books that were important to his like education at that time, he asked me if I could send them to him, so I packed them up, and I sent them and I paid for them myself. And I didn't even ask him for anything. And I didn't do it for him, really. Um, I did it because I just didn't want to be that kind of person. Maybe one of the least vengeful people that I know. Actually, I was just listening to a friend of mine. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this. Well, you don't know her. And none of my friends know about this channel, so. <laughs> so, shh, it's between us. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was listening to my friend who was talking about her roommate that she was mad at who moved out without giving her any notice. She poured water all over his computer and he had been working months on this thesis and all of it was gone. Oh my God, I would be so upset, so upset. I mean, I don't judge her because obviously I've had that kind of feeling before and I, so I understand where it's coming from, but it is still upsetting. But because of this pact that I made with myself, I mean, it makes me wonder if I ever really had it in me to begin with. I mean, obviously the thoughts I do. Although, I don't know, not even that, not even so much that anymore. But as far as the actions, I mean, I don't know. It's one of those questions like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? It's one of those kind of questions. <laughs> but I do still love revenge stories. And also stories about con men. And I, and I don't like cheating people either. I don't know, is it a vicarious thing? Because I don't feel satisfied by it. I don't know. Maybe it's like, I mean, it's more like a fascination thing. What do you guys feel about revenge? Do you have any interesting revenge stories? I'd love to hear them. Let me know. <laughs> anyway, so back to the Northman. Let's watch the trailer for the Northman. The king. Nicole's so pretty. <laughs> Nicole's so pretty. Oh my god. Is there anyone more exquisite than Nicole Kidman? I don't think so. Your fate is set and you cannot oh, escape. Oh, William it. Defoe. I didn't know he was in this. How oh, I've missed you, my son. One day this kingdom will be yours. Thank you, Father. My king. <laughs> Oh, she's like a queen. Father! Remember, for whom you shed your last year's Bjork! Oh, wow. I feel now. 
Is that it? It seems like she's playing some kind of deity or something. Or a gatekeeper. Or something like that. I hope she doesn't have like a super small part. But if you ever read Joseph Campbell's books, I feel like as an archetype, she would be representing like a wise woman or a mage or a gatekeeper or something like that. Interesting. I'm gonna avenge you, father! I'm gonna save you, mother! I'm gonna kill you, Fiona! I wanna avenge you, father. I wanna save you, mother. I wanna kill you, Fiona. Robert Eggers. Why would you stow away to such a hellish place? To find what was stolen from me. Oh, there's the Anya Taylor-Joy. The kingdom. You must choose between kindness for your kin or hate for your enemies. Your strength breaks men's bones. I have the cunning to break their minds. And night by night, we will carry out my pledge of vengeance. I will avenge you, father. I will avenge you, father. I will save you, mother. I will save you, mother. I will kill you, father. Oh, wow. Wow, that's a really cool visual. It's really all cool visuals. Extremely dark, though, but, but really amazing imagery. Was that Anya Taylor? Oh, Ethan Hawke, too. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, I'm even more excited. It's more of an adventure than I thought it was gonna be. I thought because it was Robert Eggers, it was gonna be more like a horror film or something. But I'm still excited. In fact, and maybe even more so. It kind of reminds me now more of uh, The Count of Monte Cristo, which is my favorite revenge story or movie. So yeah, that makes me even more excited. So how do you feel about the movie? Are you excited to see it? Did you see the trailer already? Let me know in the comments if you're going to be seeing the movie. Robert Eggers just has such a great vision as a director. Everything's working for it. You know, the makeup, the effects, the visuals, the acting, the cast. The whole thing is just incredible, and I'm so excited to see it. Well, thank you guys for coming and watching the trailer for The Northman with me. Like this video if you liked it, and subscribe. And of course, share, share, share. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Especially if you enjoyed it, discussing music, art, movies, fashion, food, all of it. Because that's what we do here on this channel. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And I will see you next time. Popcorn Philosopher over and out.